Hi guys. So I'm going to lead off this video with the most interesting bit of information that I've found recently and the thing that was in the title of the video so that if that's all that you're interested in, you only have to watch about a minute or two and you can leave the rest. Uh, though there is more useful information than just the first thing I'll lead with here, so you know, maybe watch the rest of the video through, but that's up to you. Anyways, there is a powerful prophecy that is called the Twins, and it works on the Cranklverse. And some of you may have already realized the implications of this, but for those of you who have not cottoned on, I'll explain exactly why this is really strong. So, Scourged Maps operate by giving you rewards based on the number of rare monsters that you can find and kill within them. Um, those rewards can be very, very valuable things like scarabs or essences or incubators or whatever. Uh, that means you want to get as many rare monsters as possible in your Scourged map. The Prophecy of the Twins doubles the packs of rare monsters in your map. This works on the Krangleverse. It doesn't double every single existing rare, but from my testing it seems about 70 to 80 percent of the rare monsters in the map get a friend who's an exact copy of them, and thus also a rare monster, and thus will drop Krangledverse items from your rewards, from your Krangled map, which is really, really powerful. You, uh, if you get the Prophecy to proc, you essentially get a 1.7 to 1.8 times multiplier on your returns from your Krangled map. It's really, really good. I expect this prophecy to be worth a lot this league if more people figure this out. Anyways, my other tips. <laughs> that is definitely the biggest thing. But some other tips, since this is a sort of tips and tricks video, and I want to be doing this, you know, at least once a league towards the beginning of the league when GGG shakes things up. Um, and and see, see you later to all the folks who are just here for the Twins Prophecy Tech. But yeah. Um, I want to do this sort of video once a league, towards the beginning of the league, because there's always some new things, like with itemization or with the atlas or whatever, that I think are worth sharing. You know, little things, little tips that you can do for gearing or for progressing or for getting the most out of your maps. And uh, some of the stuff that I've noticed this league is, one, shields are pretty ridiculous now. Shields were really good before, don't get me wrong. Great to get block, great to get a bunch of life, all that sort of stuff. But shields also provide really high armor innovation values, and obviously that got a bunch more valuable this link. So you can get like 12, 1500, however much armor or evasion out of your shield while still having access to life and res. On top of that, though, and the reason I'm showing you this one right now, is you can get incredibly powerful single affix tools for making you much, much tankier. The one I have here is up to 60% reduced extra damage from crits. For reference, the majority of other sources for this stat in the game give maybe 20 or 30, unless they're just straight immunity, like Assassin Ascendancy or the Claw Mastery. Um, you know, like the, the Boot Enchant, I believe, is only 10% and the armor mastery is 30%, so a 60% source for a single affix on a piece of gear is extremely powerful. They also added higher percent fizz mitigation rolls. I don't have one with that to demonstrate right now on screen, but you can get, I believe, up to like 8% fizz mitigation as a suffix, which is great on builds that don't stack tons of armor, but can justify using an armor or a hybrid armor shield. You know, something like, I don't know, an Inquisitor maybe that isn't going for tons of armor stack, but you still want a base that can get some ES out of it. You go for a hybrid armor ES base and you get yourself two endurance charges worth of Fizzmit out of one affix. That's pretty darn good. You could also do that with a Warlord shield and get two min endurance charges and have a shield that gives you 16% Fizz mitigation. Um, one second. Recording. Don't, don't mean to shout at him. Recording. Sorry. Should have done that first. Um, so yeah, they also buffed local block modifiers on shields, I think you can get up to like plus 12% block now. Shields were really, really good before, and for some reason they just made them way, way better. So it's very hard for me to justify doing a two-handed build or even a dual wield build now from a hardcore perspective. And some of the affixes are individually strong enough that I think even in softcore you probably want to go for it, just because basically being crit immune for an affix and an a pantheon investment because there's the crit avoid pantheon is great um a couple of things about the league mechanic about scourge specifically that you know aside from what we led the video with stun immune maps are much more dangerous than they were before because mobs in the Krangleverse can't be stunned in those maps which, I mean, that seems pretty obvious, but it's something you might not put two and two together with immediately. And obviously, one of the nice things about jumping into the Krangleverse is you knock back and stun everything around you. Well, you don't do the stun part if you're in a stun immune map, so careful of that map mod, particularly if you're in hardcore. 
Another thing with jumping into the Krangleverse, be careful you don't do that when you're next to a Blight lane, because when you jump back out, you will knock enemies off of their Blight lane, and that will then free them from having to walk down the lane to the Mushroom. They'll get tons extra movement speed and just rush to the Mushroom and possibly, you know, f rip your Blight for you. So probably don't do that. Um, anything else Scourge related? I don't think so. Oh, you probably know this one already, but... This isn't in my notes, obviously. I just wanted to see if, if there was anything else on my mind. Um, the Screaming Monsters will apply a stacking debuff to you that can go up to, I believe, 10 stacks, and that causes you to take increased physical damage. So while the Scream itself may not do a lot of damage, if you are paying attention in the top left where the debuff will be will be listed, and you see you have like 6, 7, 8 stacks of that, probably a good idea to jump out of the Krangleverse then, if you value your XP or your character if you're in Hardcore. Um, and just a couple of other little things. They buffed Pantheon overall. So obviously, Litness the Black Prayer for Cannot Be Frozen is sick. Like that's that's really, really good. And even 50% reduced effective chill on you is is great. I mean that comes close to being as valuable as chill immunity. But I don't think we should discount the other major pantheons. I've actually gone for Lunaris on this build. Because Herald of Thunder's capture, the 6% reduced alley damage take, uh, taken if you've been hit recently on a build with a decent amount of block investment, is fantastic. Because it doesn't say if you've taken damage from a hit recently, just if you've been hit recently. And a blocked hit counts as a hit that you took, which means in maps I pretty much always have this up, and that's about another max res worth of alley mitigation for mapping. On top of that, it still has the Fizz Mitigation per nearby enemy, which is a couple Endurance Charges worth of Fizz Mitigation if it's up, and obviously some generic crowd Avoidance doesn't hurt. Um, but even Arakali got quite a lot better, in my opinion, with just straight up 10% reduced damage taken from damage over time. This can be a very hard thing to deal with if you're playing something like a Max Block Glad, or even some champions in Hardcore, getting damage reduction from damage over time is pretty hard to do unless you have really good recovery to counteract it, but now you've got a couple generic sources. For champions, you have this particular one here, which is a 10% reduction, and if you were really scared of it, you could even go for Arakali and getting Arachnoxia isn't terrible either. Debuffs expiring faster is great for some of the debuffs from things like Scourge, or, you know, some Harvest mobs that have nasty debuffs. Um, and one final thing that doesn't have a visual aid, Delve Jewelry Nodes can drop Cluster Jewels now. Yay! Anyways, that's all my tips and tricks for the League start of Scourge League. There might be some more. We might do a sequel video of this for this league. If not, there will of course be one at the start of next league, since GGG always shakes things up. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.